the possibility to to enjoy this year and uh, to to have lived in this year also with all the people and uh, it was a, a little piece of history. Yes, another piece of history there, James. It's great, yeah. First time Klinsman's done something without falling over. <laughs> well, it was. Right. Actually, it was oh. nice to see him on his feet there for that oh, interview, oh, wasn't it? Marvelous, mate. Right, well, we have more international action for you now right. as we catch up with two high scoring performances in the European Championship qualifiers. Right. Here's Clive Tilsley. Two of Europe's most accomplished marksmen took the opportunity to get in some midweek target practice. Marco van Basten scoring five times in Holland's 8-0 win in Malta. Nobody more delighted than his teammates to see him back at his sharpest after a quiet World Cup. His stride quickens the moment the cross is on the way to make him first to the ball with spectacular results. But the best was yet to come. His third and fourth either side of half-time were memorable efforts that would have seen off better teams than Malta. First, a classically executed bicycle kick from Hullet's Cross. Marvellous athleticism. And then a really clever goal midway through the second half, outwitting everybody by taking the chance with his left foot, just as he seemed to be winding up his right. A touch of top class about that one. But that's my goal. The 9-0 win puts Spain two points behind the group leaders, 100% France, who they meet in Paris in February. It can't come soon enough for Butragueno in his present mood. Wonderful stuff. Oh, the fans will be singing there. Is that five Van Basten, four Butragueno? Yeah, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. Well, getting in the oh, mood, Jim. You're getting thanks. in the mood oh, for that's Christmas. Right. Eh? That's right. Well, it's been a funny old week funny for the world's most cut footballer, Peter Schultz. It has Schultz. been a funny old week, so. <laughs> 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 Funny old week for you as well, Jim. Yeah. Well, <laughs> last last Saturday, Chelsea put six past them at the baseball ground, and then on Tuesday, some of the world's greatest players gathered together at Tottenham to help pay tribute to his marvellous talents. Ooh. It'll take a big man to fill Peter Shilton's England jersey. He couldn't have set higher standards for the next generation. Shame only 12,000 were there to see the World Cup team assembled by Franz Beckenbauer take on a Graham Taylor national eleven. With the likes of Valderrama, Haji and Miller facing him, Shilton might have expected a busier night. But he kept his fingers warm with a couple of athletic saves. This one from the old French maestro Michel Platini. A great contest between two men with more still to give to the international scene. Shilton the winner as usual. England scored twice in the opening quarter of an hour. The first, a rather iffy penalty awarded for Aston Villa's Kent Nielsen's challenge on Aston Villa's David Platt. Platt wasn't in agreement but wasn't arguing either. Gary Lineker, who dispatched two life-giving penalties past Thomas and Kono of Cameroon in Naples during the summer, repeated the act. Chris Waddle was one of the night's successes, employed as a so-called wing-back by Graham Taylor, setting up a wing-forward Matthew Letizier for a persistent goal. A man for the future, maybe. The man of the moment graced the occasion with a typically audacious goal. Paul Gascoigne making it three, weaving past defenders like a slalom skier, he rarely disappoints when the stage is set for him. Shilton made an early exit to rest his legs for club commitments. Lineker and company will be seeing plenty more of him yet, though. He still has two years of his Derby County contract to run. As one England great departed, another return. Kevin Keegan's scampering running action may have changed, but his touch hasn't, and neither has his appetite for the game. His old boss at Southampton, Laurie McMenemy, wanted to substitute the substitute. But Keegan wasn't leaving without leaving his indelible mark on the game. With nine minutes to go, he revived his Newcastle partnership with Waddle and Gascoigne and made it 4-0 himself with a diving header. It was a night when England old and new came together to honour the man who served England magnificently through several eras. It's fantastic. A week before Christmas, to turn out a crowd like this, uh, it's made my evening and, uh, you know, it's something I'll remember for the rest of my life, so tremendous. Well, he thoroughly deserved a tribute, didn't he? Well, that's right. And a great goalkeeper, Schultz. I've always been, actually, a great fan of Schultz. I was with him the other night, actually, with oh, Dave yeah. Bassett, yeah, the Sheffield United manager, and big Ron Atkinson of the Wednesday. I said to Dave, what's your ambition, Dave, for 1991? Well, he said, to be honest, my ambition is for Sheffield United to win a league game. Yeah. And what about you then, Ron? I said, well, he said, second division championship, Rumbelow's Cup, FA 
League Cup, Charity Shield, top of the first division. That is a bit over the top, Ron, I said. Well, he started it. We've got a final score of a match played this morning. It's Preston 2, Stoke 0. Oh. Gary Swan with the goals there. Nice Time one. for a break now in Park 2. Right. We'll be hearing more from Gravesy. We've action from last right. night's matches and we have a few fun items for you as well, right. so stay with us. See you soon. Arbus Football Collection, all the game's great players, all the game's best looking managers, with one or two exceptions. Are you confused about switching to unleaded and trapped into using four star? Help is on its way. For Esso, who were first to sell unleaded in the UK, have produced a simple guide that releases you. It explains who can make the break to Esso Unleaded and who to Esso Super Plus Unleaded. Check the guide. There's nothing to hold you back. Old Spice Aftershave Cologne and Gift Packs being shipped in time for Christmas. So give him Old Spice and celebrate goodwill toward men. Your friend, uh, Harvey, what did he come at? A glass of sherry. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Drink Harvey's Bristol Cream. In this continuous test, Duracell outlasts ordinary SP batteries by up to six times. No ordinary battery looks like it or lasts like it. Welcome back, and Hello. with Christmas shopping at its frenzied height, many clubs opted to play last night, and we've gathered together some of the action for you, starting at Boundary Park, Oldham against Plymouth. On the old plastic region, I know you weren't a yeah. favourite of plastic Whoa. pitches. No, not really, say no. How long have they had this then? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Neil Redfern. 80 seconds, Joe Royals team on the lead. Great goal, great goal. Now, Keith Edwards is on loan from Huddersfield, yeah. And as you know, he's a league's leading goal scorer, and there's another one from Tiritali. 1-1. One, one. Oh. <laughs> uh, Kenny Brown puts oh, Plymouth 2-1 up. Kenny. Kenny Brown, you remember Kenny. Did you play with Kenny Brown? No, no. Kenny, oh, Kenny Brown. No, I played with, him. I played with his dad. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I remember old Ken. That's his boy. Uh, Roger Palmer made it 2-2 two, two, a minute before half-time. Oh. Nice goal, that one. So, nice goal, that. He Never. took it well. To be honest, that's as good a goal as you'll see in this particular match. Into the second, <laughs> into the second half, Earl Barrett, centre back. What's he doing up there, Jim? Scoring a goal, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then, and then he's up again. Only what? Then it's late, and he's up yeah. again, oh. setting up this goal. Good player, good player. Good ball, good ball, and Neil Redfern has second of the night. Four-two. Oh. Four-two. Oh, what can I say? <laughs> No, it's a lovely. Uh, young Kenny again. Oh. Young Brownie getting his second. Oh, nice goal. Nice goal, Sam. 4-3, so. All on tender hits. Actually, he took that very well, Sam. He did, dude. 
And Roger Palmer, what a player he's been for Oldham over the years. Marvellous player. At his own hand again, knocks and Oldham top of the second division, Jim. All right, top of the second division. Yeah. Right, right, Isn't it right. marvellous? But talking about Palmers, here's another Palmer down in this match, Portsmouth against Ipswich. Steve Palmer scoring a goal for Ipswich. Is that his brother, saying? <laughs> one's black and one's white. Possibly not, really. In the second half, this was uh, big Colin Clark who'd come on as a substitute. Oh, nice okay. goal that from the... Nice goal, Clark. Yeah, yeah, took it nice well. Nice goal, sir. Took that one well, sir. Now it's up to Merseyside for our Friday night favourites, oh. Tranmere against Birmingham. Right. You're all up, sir. <laughs> Actually, they've been having a little bit of a struggle of late, so no, yeah, it was nice same. to see this oh, one yeah. going in. Kenny Irons yeah. finishing off well. That was at four minutes. Oh, nice goal for Managed Jeremy. to hang on after that one. So a good result for Tranmere. Marvellous, yeah. marvellous. Well, there's goal. plenty of great, league great, action great at goals. ITV over the Christmas and New Year period with Spurs against Manchester United, New Year's Day, Crystal Palace against Liverpool on the 30th of December, and tomorrow at the normal start time, 2.55, it's Aston Villa against Arsenal from Villa Park. Now we're going to highlight a trend which threatens to rewrite the goal-scoring statistic records. We've noticed that so many goals that were originally credited as own goals are now being claimed by the attacking players. Clive Tilsley reports again. Oh. Claiming deflections is one thing, but when Wimbledon scored the most significant goal of last weekend, in the last minute at Arsenal, John Fashnew took the congratulations and the credit for it. It was only later that goalkeeper David Seaman owned up to a mispunch Fashnu never even touched it. When it comes to goal stealing, the crime rate is on the up, particularly on Merseyside. Hitchcliffe's free kick. trying to get there. Oh, and it off the save! Stuart McCall will claim the goal, but he bounced off the crossbar and on to Glenn Hussain. Stuart McCall's header was actually heading out, but benevolent Everton awarded him that Goodison Derby goal, just as they awarded Pat Nevin this one at Sheffield United. No wonder Dixie Dean used to get so many for them. Anders Limpar's eight goals for Arsenal this season have been an unexpected bonus. He'll get a lot more with this kind of help from fullbacks. Limpar celebrates another goal, but Leeds United's Mel Sterling actually whipped the ball off his toe, then shot himself in the foot. Back to Arsenal and Wimbledon finally, the opening day of the season, and a goal the Arsenal programme gave to Alan Smith and the newspapers to Don's defender Keith Curl. But is this a case of a striker not claiming a goal that does actually belong to him? I fancy number 10, Paul Merson, got the final touch. But I put it to Merson, and he just won't have it. Thank goodness there's still one on his striker out there. Crazy. Well, that is amazing, wow, Breezy. People is. claiming goals. It is never crazy, even touched the ball. I mean, if you back to your playing days, you'd oh, have, if right. you'd have claimed it, you'd had about, what, 950 well, goals? I think so. Then you might even have got into double figures. Well, that's, a, that's a possibility. <laughs> that's a possibility. No, I mean, but it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, they'll have Ken Bates claiming goals at Chelsea soon because it's his ball. <laughs> <laughs> ridiculous. Right now, from ridiculous. scoring goals to celebrating goals. And those of you who saw the way that Lee Sharp reacted to his goal against Everton for Manchester United yeah. a couple of weeks ago will have appreciated a little style is called for in these matters nowadays. Oh, wow. We put together a montage of the development of the cultured art of celebrating. Miller, good turn. Miller inside the penalty area. He gets off the line. Roger Miller's done it. He's the only swinger in town.
<laughs> you enjoyed Lovely. that, oh, there, Jim, didn't you? Lovely. So, how did you celebrate when you scored? Um, well, to be honest, Saint, I used to celebrate with a few lagers and a couple of vodkas. <laughs> 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 Did get a bit of a blur though for the rest of the game. <laughs> yes. a bit of a problem. So you never had a cup of tea at half time no, like the rest no, of us, no, it? No, 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 no. Okay, now I know that you all enjoy seeing some of the daft things that happen when the cameras are rolling and which usually end up on the cutting room floor. Well, we've a couple of outtakes for you. First, this one, which concerns a TV reporter from Irish television oh. at an airport in Italy during the World Cup. Bear in mind he's been set up by Ronnie Whelan and Andy Townsend. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come come on, 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 come Right, now hold on. Nice Keep it shut tight. Yeah, sure. Keep it as straight as you possibly can. Don't, don't One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Well, we'll, we'll be back with him a little later. Not but before we do, on, it? here's an outtake from the ITV Athletics coverage of the European Championships. Jim Rosenthal was attempting to say goodnight to the viewers when a member of his own production team took centre stage. There's one person back home we'd like to thank, and that's Glenn and Anne. And I just hope they're going to have a little drink on us tonight. And you've got a little message, I think, as well. Spin around, Yvonne, and show that one. There we are. We did it, Mum, both of you. Tom and Yvonne, brilliant. Great day for Britain and a fantastic day for Scotland as well. Well done. Marvellous. OK, well, uh, as uh, the triumphant Scots uh, move away, let's just take a check on the medal table. And goodness me, it does look uh, excellent reading. Excellent reading for Britain. Oh, that that is Gary Newbon, isn't it? That's a bit Gary, was it? <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't Newbon. Yeah, <laughs> the culprit was a chap called Mel Batty, who's a former world record holder over 10 miles, and ITV's fixer of interviews on the athletic circuit. Now, Mel's a great Arsenal fan, yeah. but has an incredible habit of appearing in shot when it's most inconvenient. Anyway, let's go back now to our Irish fan. And he's still going. He's still going, Jim. Got to go an itch, mate. It's still going. I mean, got about as many friends as. Is that normal, Jeff? What, what are you doing? Are you having a problem? <laughs> right, let. Well, he's Wally, going to eh? the, the Guinness Book of Records, that one. He is to broadcast him what Long John Silver was to tap dance in that. <laughs> <laughs> How are you going to spend Christmas, Sir uh, Um, Well, as you know, I'm not feeling too good at the moment. I hope to be back on my feet fairly soon, Saint. And, you know, uh -huh. and uh, looking forward to seeing a bit of football, perhaps, over the so um, festive you, period, mate. A few glasses of night nurse in early bed, well, I think. I think so. I think that's the order of the day. And get this itch sorted out as well. <laughs> <laughs> well that, that's it. Just before you go, just before you go, you can check if you've won a prize in last week's competition. Yeah. We asked who was the first player ever sent off playing for England. Oh. The answer we wanted was Alan Mullery, oh, sent off against Yugoslavia in 1968. Oh, Our 22 prize winners will receive either a copy of the John Barnes video yeah. or one of the St. Greaves World Cup specials signed by us both, Jim. It's rubbish. It's rubbish. <laughs> I mean, have you read it, Saint? Next it's weekend, I know we one kick of off at terminal at early time of 12.30. 12 so remember, get the shop and done a bit early. Ellen Nixatti, join us at 12.30. And finally, our special thanks today to the voice of Jimmy Greaves. You probably didn't even realise that it was not Greaves at all, but his spitting image puppet. But we're very grateful to our old colleague, Peter Brackley, now working for Eurosport, for coming in today to play the part. Well, I hope that the real Jimmy Greaves and all of you will be able to join us next Saturday at the earlier time, of course, of 12.30. For now, a very happy Christmas and goodbye from us all. Peter. Oh, that's ah, that. thank you. Yeah. Hey, there you are, one for you. Give it to the people. Well done. Good man. Oh. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, you don't want to.
Well, well then, enjoy, enjoy yourself. The Match 1991 Soccer Annual, produced by ITV Sport and featuring all the stars in match action, is now available in bookshops priced £4.25. Music from Britain's top musical stars and shows with Michael Crawford next. <laughs>